All right. So now we're going to, I don't know if you've noticed this, but, but so far, every time we sort of change subjects, I'm, I'm just adding one more variable into this problem of how do you figure out how to do sound you know, in, for a sound system, right? So the variable we added last time was directivity. You know, what role does the directivity of the loudspeaker play in the decisions you make? Uh, before that, it was, OK, how do we sort out level and how level manif and in decibels manifests itself in air and voltage and all those different things, and how do you have to worry about that? Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the uh, We've, we've so far been looking at loudspeakers just in and of themselves. Here's how much sound they can make, right? And here's how you can get the sound to go where you want it to go. But now we're going to introduce the variable of the microphone, OK? Because the microphone, unless you're doing playback only, a microphone is part of this, right? Uh, that, that the thing you're trying to pick up and make louder has to go through a microphone first. Uh, and so. We're, we're going to look at that, and we're also going to look at what role does the room itself play in this, in the sense that of the acoustic side of it. So the sound reflecting around in the room, uh, what does that do to it? Uh, but for now, we're going to talk about the microphone. Okay? So you're in, you've, you've, you've all been in this situation to some extent already. Uh, hang on, let me get my thing up here. There we go. You've all probably done this already before, where OK, you've got something happening on a stage. Either somebody's talking, someone's playing a musical instrument, whatever. You're going to put a microphone on that. You're going to feed that into a mixing console. You're going to put it out of a loudspeaker. And you're going to try to get it you know, to be whatever loudness you think you need at the audience. Right? Does that sound like a scenario that you're all somewhat familiar with? Hopefully? Yes. OK, so what are the problems you've run into in that scenario? What keeps you from getting the, the level of loudness that you want? Feedback usually is what stops you, right? Eventually, you get to a point where it's the, the, you start getting these really loud noises coming out of the loudspeaker that you don't want, and you have to stop trying to push it up louder because you can't get it up past that. Even and you, so, all of this sort of like calculations you've done of how do I get the loudspeaker to be as loud as I can possibly get it, uh, which we've now learned how to do, is not going to matter if you hit your feedback point <laughs> only six dB uh, into that. Uh, scenario. That's going to be a little disappointing. So uh, let's talk about uh, this, this scenario and what's really going on. So the first thing is like, well, just we need to define what we talk about in the context of what is a sound reinforcement system. What is a sound reinforcement system? Because when we put a microphone on something, that thing is already making sound, right? A person talking is already making sound. A musical instrument is already making sound. What we're doing is trying to pick up a little bit of that and reinforce that. Uh, we're going to use what it's already doing, and we're going to add a little bit to it in loudness in order to get it to get where we want it to be. So what are the components of that system? Well, we know about the loudspeaker. And I've now introduced the concept of the microphone. So there's a loudspeaker and a microphone. But there are two other elements of your system. And they are the listener, or the audience, the person listening to this, and this, you know, which we will call for purposes of today, the talker. Uh, and this is why we call these things loudspeakers and these things talkers. Because if we use the word speaker, that could apply to either of these things, right? So if you use that, that word speaker, sometimes that can cause confusion. It's like, well, which thing are you talking about? Are you talking about the thing up in the air or the thing on the stage making the sound, right? Uh, so that's just a terminology you need to start getting into your brain. Loudspeakers and talkers, or loudspeakers and performers, or loudspeaker, you know, don't use the term speakers because that can apply to different things. And you want to make sure you're being clear when you're communicating, OK? Uh, so that's your basic, your, this, this is your basic reinforcement system. Four components of every sound system, loudspeaker, microphone, listener, talker. If there's no listener there, then why are you showing up to work, <laughs> right? 
If there's no talker, if there's no, nothing on stage happening, again, why are you showing up to work? Because there's nothing for any, everyone to hear. Okay? Again, unless it's a playback show uh, and you've already record, all, recorded all this stuff, and all that just means is the microphone and the talker happened on a different day. <laughs> okay, but they still were a part of this. All right, so uh, figuring out this notion of gain before feedback, and what I mean by that is gain is how much louder can you get it before it feeds back, okay? And this is all about perception by the person listening. So we're going to be talking today about acoustical gain. An acoustical gain is defined as the difference in loudness between when the sound system is turned off and when the sound system is turned on. So you turn on the sound system, hopefully things get louder. Okay? Because otherwise, why are you there? Okay? You're there to make it louder. And we measure how much louder it is based on how the listener hears it. So the person sitting there in the seat they have to hear something get louder. If they don't hear it get louder, but you do up at the mix position, then you failed. Okay? You're, you're having a grand old time, and it sounds great to you, but if the listener who shows up and is sitting there watching the show doesn't hear what you're hearing, then it doesn't count. <laughs> it only counts if the listener hears it. Okay? Uh, so that's what we're talking about. Acoustical gain. The difference in perceived loudness by the listener between when the sound system is turned off and the sound system being turned on. Okay, so it turns out that you can predict this. You can actually predict exactly how much louder you're going to be able to make it before you ever do it. Okay, which is a super important skill because you're going to try to convince people to pay you money to make it louder. Right? That's that's the career that you're all signing up for. When you distill this thing down to its most basic level, we make stuff louder. All of our technology that we have is all centered around making something louder. Now, yes, there is artistry, and there is frequency response, and tonal quality, and all of that stuff, but ultimately, we're making stuff louder. Okay? So you're going to convince, you're going to go out after you leave here in a couple of years and have a career where you're trying to get people to give you money in exchange for making something louder. Okay. Now, in some cases, you might be creating the thing that you then have to make louder. Right? You might be creating the music, or you might be creating the dog bark, or whatever, that you then make louder so the audience can hear it. But ultimately, making it louder is an essential part of that equation. If you fail at the making it louder part, it doesn't matter how amazing the composition was, because no one will hear it. Okay? So, how do we make it louder? That's what we're talking about with acoustical gain. What do we gain in loudness as a result of you showing up for work? Okay? So, let's take a look at what happens. We know that feedback is the thing that gets in our way the most from making it louder when we've got a live microphone involved. So, what's happening uh, with feedback? Well, here's, here is a, a sort of signal flow diagram of our sound system. We have a microphone. We have some sort of a preamplifier. We got the big amplifier that then drives the loudspeaker, right? The loudspeaker then puts out sound. So you've got sound moving, air molecules moving, pushing and pulling on that little microphone, and then that gets converted to a voltage, an audio voltage signal, and then that gets amplified really big and then shoots out of a loudspeaker. And the loudspeaker is pushing and pulling on the air at a higher amplitude than the original thing. Okay, that's how sound systems work. You with me so far? Okay. So what happens is some of that sound will go out to the listeners. Okay? But some of that sound, as we know, loudspeakers, they, they are directional, but not perfectly directional. Right? Some of the sound just kind of goes everywhere. So some of that sound that's coming out of that loudspeaker that's way louder is going to make its way back into the microphone. Okay? Now, so now you've got two sounds hitting the microphone. You've got the original sound from the talker, and you've got the sound from the loudspeaker entering the microphone. Feedback will happen when those two sounds hit the microphone at the same level. Let me say that again. Feedback will happen when the sound from the talker 
hits the microphone at the same loudness as the sound from the loudspeaker. So when those two sounds hit the microphone at the same level, that's when feedback happens. Why? Because if they're depending on the offset of time, there's a amount of time, right? Hopefully the loudspeaker is a little bit farther away than the talker is. So the sound comes out of that loudspeaker, makes it back into the microphone. That's going to take a little bit longer for that sound to get at the microphone than the sound from the talker to get to the microphone. There's a difference in time. So here is just a little graph where we've got these little impulse waves. So this is the initial sound, the talker up front here. And then at the bottom, we've got the sound coming out of the loudspeaker. And there's a change of time, delta t, change of time. And there's going to be some frequency where that difference of time lines up at a zero degree phase angle. So there's a certain number of wavelengths that that time represents, or periods that that time represents. And there will be some frequency that lines up with that initial sound, right? So where the pulses line up. And when that happens, well, what happens when you get two sounds at a zero, combining at a zero degree phase angle? They double. They get louder. Okay, So there's one frequency that's going to naturally kind of lock into phase between, uh, you know, that's coming out of the loudspeaker and coming out of the talker. And it's hit the microphone at the same level, and it's going to lock into phase, that one frequency. And that one frequency gets louder. right? And then what happens? That one frequency goes through that amplifier and gets even louder coming out. And so now it hits back to the microphone, and the same thing happens again. It goes over, over, over. And every time it makes that trip, it gets louder, 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 which is why with feedback, if you just let it go, it just gets louder and louder and louder the longer you let it run. Because every time it goes through that trip, it's doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling. 6 dB, 6 dB, 6 dB, 6 dB. Yeah. Yeah, it just gets worse. So, so now it's like the thing coming out of the loudspeaker and hitting the talker is louder. But it begins when those two things arrive at the mic at the same level. They arrive at the same level, and same level, and zero degree phase angle for one frequency means that one frequency gets louder, comes back around, and then it does it again, and does it again, and does it again. It gets louder and louder and louder. So it begins when those two levels meet. Okay, what do you, you said the word speaker, what do you mean? The, the loudspeaker. Okay. So the off fill that's hitting the microphone. Yeah. Can be louder than what the speaker is. So the talker? Talkers. Okay. Yes, and that will cause feedback as well. But feedback Even will. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, because then, then you'll have a different frequency that lines up at a zero degree phase angle, right? So that's why, that's why feedback comes out like a sine wave. It's because it's a single frequency that locks into that zero degree phase angle. But if you just move it, it'll be a different frequency. So, that, I mean, so it's more, it's in a volume thing and not in distance. Well, I mean, the distance is part of this, right? I'm just saying that moving it an inch just means it'll be a different frequency that locks in. Exactly, right? Uh, okay. So that's the, the the fundamental concept I want you to understand is that feedback occurs when those two sounds, the sound from the talker and the sound from the loudspeaker, hit the microphone at the same level. Okay, that's when feedback begins. And yes, it gets worse as the sound from the loudspeaker gets louder. Okay. So if you everybody understand at least that much. Um, kind of, kind of. So you're going to see that there's a bit more going on than that. But so let's let's take a look at how we could figure this out. So I just said it's possible to predict 
how loud or how much gain you could get before feedback. Let's see if we can do it. How would we do it? So I've, I've given you these different distances. You've got ds, which is the distance between the talker and the microphone. You've got d0, which is distance between the talker and the listener. d1 is the distance between the microphone and the loudspeaker. And d2 is the distance between the loudspeaker and the listener. OK, you got that? And here's what those all are. So ds is one meter. We're going to do this in meters today just for fun, right? Just to show you that for, for deans, you know, right? yeah. Uh, this is one example we're doing it in metric, makes the math easier. Okay, so uh, what the talker's one meter away from the microphone. The talker is seven meters away from the listener, so on and so forth. Okay, so knowing what we know, we know that feedback will happen when the sound from that loudspeaker hits the microphone at the same level as the sound from the talker. We should be able to figure out our gain then. So. Let's say that the talker is talking and it's hitting this microphone at 70 dB SPL. Okay? From the talker. Talker talks, the mic gets a 70 dB SPL signal. Yeah? So ultimately, feedback will happen when the sound from the loudspeaker also hits the mic at 70 dB SPL. Right? You with me? That's when feedback begins. So let's, uh, let's figure out how much gain that would be. The first thing I want to know is, OK, if I just don't even show up for work and we never turn on the sound system, how much sound does that listener hear? OK? So that's going to be, uh, we just have to figure out the dB loss between these two distances. OK? So we could do, it'd be 70 minus uh, 20 times the log of uh, d0 divided by ds, those two distances. right? So d0 is 7, and ds is 1. So 20 times the log of 7 divided by 1, what is that? OK. And say that again? OK. Well, if you include the 70 minus, so. But I'm just saying 20 times log of 7 divided by 1. What's that? Uh, 16.1. OK. So take 70 and subtract that. 53. Then you get 50. Then there's your 53, OK? So yes, should be 53 dB SPL if we never turn the sound system on. Okay? That's what the listener will hear with the talker talking, however loud they're talking, but it's 70 dB at 1 meter away, OK? With, you, with me so far? That's just straight up inverse square law. We don't show up. Listener here is 53 dB SPL. That's not very loud. OK? All right. So now we show up for work. We turn on the sound system. And we know that feedback will begin when the sound from the loudspeaker hits the mic at 70 dB, which means we can't ever get it any louder than that, because that's when feedback will start. And if, if we push it up louder, the feedback's just going to get worse. So whatever that point is, how loud now is the sound as perceived by the listener? Well, all we got to do there is figure out uh, the, we would do that same level. If it, it's basically, if it's 70 dB here from the loudspeaker, how loud is it there? It's all we're trying to figure out. Okay? So that would just be essentially the same thing. We would do uh, 70 uh, minus. 20 times the log of, uh, this in this case, d2 divided by d1. Distance 2 divided by distance 1. Okay, And distance 2 is 6 meters, and distance 1 is 4 meters. That'll tell me the dB difference between these two distances. And I subtract that from the 70 dB, and I'll be left with the loudness at the, at the, the listener. So what's 20 times the log of 6 divided by 4? 3.5. What I'm trying to find is if the, if the sound from the loudspeaker is hitting the microphone at 70 dB SPL, oh. how loud is it at the listener? So you said 20 times the log of 6 divided by 4 is 3.5? Is that what you said, Dan? 
20 times log of 6 divided by 4 is 3.5. So 70 minus 3.5 is what? 66.5. 4. We'll call that 5. <laughs> 66.5 dBSPL. So system off is in black. That's 53. System on, 66.5 dBSPL. So our gain is the difference between those two things. Okay, so what is 66 and a half minus 53? 13. Yeah, 13.5 dB SPL. Okay, that's our gain. We turn the system on, we take it as loud as we can take it before feedback happens. And we get 13 and a half dB. We can make the show 13 and a half dB louder. That's it. Okay? Not a whole lot. It's not a whole lot of, of level, okay, that we're getting. Uh, so let, let me summarize now how we what we just did into one formula. So here's a combined equation of what we just did. <laughs> okay? If we just express that as one long equation, that's it. 70 minus 20 times the log of D2 divided by D1 minus 70 minus 20 times the log of D0 divided by DS. That's what we just did. Okay? And that formula gave us, in this scenario, 13 and a half dB of gain. Okay? You with me so far? So that's what we, we just said that the talker is. We just arbitrarily picked that. We just said, okay, they're talking at 70 dB SPL at the mic. Okay. okay? Yeah. So yes, you could change that to anything you want, and you'd get the same level. Okay? So now I'm about to blow your mind. Uh, this is another version of this equation. Okay? Uh, one thing you'll notice is this minus 6. And the important thing about the minus 6 is this is what we call the safety factor, because 13 and a half dB SPL of gain is when feedback begins, and we don't want to be there, right? So we want to be below that. So usually you want to be 6 dB below your feedback point, which means if we take 6 dB off of our 13.5, what do we have? 7.5. So 7 and a half dB is really our usable gain, okay? Because we don't want to be at 13.5 because that's when feedback starts. So the show will be kind of ringy the whole time. You want to be below that. So we usually try to say 6 dB below. So, but for now, pretend that minus 6 wasn't there. Run the equation this way. Plug in the numbers for D1, DS, D0, D2. Run it and see what you get. See if you get the same answer. Yeah, the log tangent is just base 10 logarithm. It's, okay. it's the same log you're doing. So 20 times the log of D1 divided by DS times D0 divided by D2. Somebody, all of you do that and tell me what answer you get. Yeah. Okay, did we get the same answer? Okay, we got the same answer. You do the minus six and then it's the seven, right? Seven and a half. Okay, what's different about that equation? That is, what is noticeably different about that equation? Yeah, but there's something, there's, there's a variable missing from the second equation. There's no 70, and what was the 70? The level of the talker. Right? So we just proved mathematically that our gain before feedback is independent of the level of the talker. That number stays the same no matter how loud they talk. Isn't that interesting? How many times have you blamed your crappy sound system on an actor that's not talking loud enough? Right? Doesn't matter how loud they talk. Your sound system, your sound system's gain is a fixed thing. They talk louder or quieter, doesn't matter. 
what you can do is the same. Now, what is true is potentially, what we're, you know, what the variable we're not considering is how loud does it need to be at the listener? What is, what is the SPL target? What are we trying to accomplish here? And it might be that if that person talked louder, then there would be more sound getting to the listener without you showing up, right? If they just talked louder, then that 53 might be a bigger number, OK? And therefore, if what you were really trying to hit, let's say what you were trying to hit was 70 dB, like you want the, talk, the listener to hear 70 dB, which is what they're doing up here, uh, then you know you're not going to get there, right? Because we can only get to 66 and a half. So you can't get it. But if they were able to talk, what? 4 dB louder, if they were able to do 74 dB at one meter, and then you add your 13 and a half that you can do, then you're at the 70. Okay? But in either of those scenarios, your contribution was the same. So it's not necessarily the actor's fault <laughs> that the system is feeding back. Because your sound system will do the same, in this case, 13 and a half dB, no matter how loud they talk. And therefore, it's not entirely fair to them to blame the problem on an actor not talking loud enough. Because you should have des designed a system that had more gain. OK? Right? Yeah, but like that's ultimately, if your job was to make it louder, and you can't make it loud enough, then you have failed. right? Because you can't change that actor. That actor is doing what they can do. And you could just design your sound system to have more gain. Yes? How did the great rosetta ball of sound work if all of the loudspeakers are behind the sound? So you think that it would be louder. Okay, so I'm not, let's, before we go there, let's, oops. Hang on. Let me clear this out. Before we go there, let's, let's take a look at this little exercise here. So uh, what I've done is, is uh, when we did our, our book, uh, Eric created this, this cool little flash demo that lets us play around with this concept of acoustical gain. So we're going to take, th take you through some of the stuff that we've already done. So OK, we know that the four components are loudspeaker, microphone, we're calling this a sound source in here, but it's a talk or whatever, and a listener. OK. Uh, there also is our operator, right, that has a role in this, cries the operator has to push the fader, so we don't want to forget that person, okay? Uh, but let's take a look at what's really going on here. It turns out that this is a geometry problem, not a loudness problem, okay? So it's, we know that it's not because the talker is talking too quietly. We know it's, it's actually because of the geometry of our, the relationship of these components to one another. And if we can change that relationship, we can change the outcome. We can change the gain. OK, so let's demonstrate what that looks like. OK, so here's our formula, 20 times the log of d1 divided by ds times d0 divided by d2. OK, so let's take a look at what happens. Uh, in this scenario, with exactly these distances, our gain is 10 dB. OK, that is the point at which it feeds back, once we get 10 dB louder at the listener. Uh, but look what happened. If I took that loudspeaker and moved it, what happened to our gain? Yeah. Went down, right? So where did I move it? I moved it closer to the mic and farther away from the listener. Okay, gain went down. Uh, so if you can get the loudspeaker further away from the microphone, gain goes up. See that? We just took, all we did is take the loudspeaker and moved it straight up by five or six feet, and we gained six dB of gain. Yeah? Next thing. What if you could move the loudspeaker closer to the listener? Gain goes up. Now I'm at 19 and a half dB of gain, because I both got, it, got the loudspeaker further away from the mic and closer to the listener. Yeah? So uh, you could also 
get the talker closer to the microphone. Right? So I, got, I, I moved the talker closer to the mic. Now I'm at 41 dB of gain. That's all. Now, now that I, would, I, would, I could collect a paycheck for that. Yeah? What are you using your talker for? Did you make them louder at the mic? Well, the talk, moving the talker decreased DS. DS is now a smaller number. Uh, but yes, now they are hitting, their, their voice is hitting the microphone at a louder level, and you didn't change the loudspeaker. So it's going to, you know, you're, that point at which the loudspeaker hits the mic at the same level is going to be a little bit further away now because the talker's hitting the mic significantly louder because they haven't lost so much by being so far away from the mic. Okay? So getting the talker closer, all you're really doing is changing these numbers. If you can make DS a smaller number, if you can make D1 a larger number, either of those things will make gain go up. Likewise, if you can make D0 larger number, so you see what if you do, you can manipulate those distances, gain goes up. Okay. So the other thing you can do is you can use a directional microphone because so far we've been assuming that the loudspeaker and the microphone are omnidirectional. So look what happens if we in introduce directivity into this. Uh, if we, uh, let's see. So here is an omnidirectional microphone, and in this scenario with this geometry, we end up with 4.5 dB of gain. Okay? Um, and yes, I can move around the talker, right? And I can make gain go up, right? I could move the loudspeaker, and I could make gain go up, right? But if I put it back here, and if I just switch, Give it to me. Oh, there it goes. OK, now I'm at a cardioid microphone. I get an extra 10 dB. Why? Because the microphone is less sensitive at this angle. OK, so even though the sound coming from the loudspeaker is hitting the mic at, at this high level, at that angle, the, last, the, the microphone doesn't sense it as loud. OK, now watch what happens. As I move it, see as I get further off axis? I'm still getting a lot of good gain because even though this is now closer, I'm getting well out of the pattern of the microphone, and so gain goes up. Okay? There, I can even go to a, a slightly different one. Maybe, maybe. Come on, I have to get the mouse. There we go. Okay, so there's a, a hypercardioid. I'm getting 24 dB of extra gain. If I even move it and can position this somehow right in that node, I can get a lot of gain. Right now I'm at 42. Okay, so directivity of the microphone can improve this situation. Uh, omnidirectional microphones, that doesn't help you very much. And it turns out in musical theater, which is what a lot of us do, we have to use omnidirectional microphones because we can't control where the microphone is. Because just like loudspeakers is like, okay, yeah, they get quieter off axis, but, but maybe more accurately, their frequency response changes when they go off axis. Same thing with microphones. Yeah? So the 42.7 dB is where the feedback would occur. Yeah. A little bit lower than that, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, as, as far as like how many, how much dB I gain? No, no, I mean, how does it sound with the, with the D1 divided by DS? Oh. Well, so we took that, what, what we did is, when we were writing the book, is we took that, that sort of long form one that we did first, and we just, and we just figured out a way oh, okay. to collapse it into, and, you know, it's like, okay, well, ultimately what we did was this, and it just gets you the same result. Yeah. So are there like polar plugs for microphones? There are. <laughs> so one, that's one of your pro things for your assignment, is I'm going to ask you to consider uh, SM, a Shure SM58 versus a Shure Beta 58. And if you look at the spec sheets from the, those, they have polar plots. And they'll be able to tell you what their sensitivity is at different angles, just like a loudspeaker. Okay. Yeah? And to uh, measure this line, would you use a, um, a uh, DB meter? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the only way you could do it is know, like, or you could just train your ears to know how many dB it changed. Okay. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, but you brought the microphone, right? So don't you get to decide where it goes? Yeah. Yeah, and then it feeds back, and you tell the director, get him to hold the mic closer so that we can fix this problem. <laughs> and it's not, hey, crappy actor, why don't you start talking louder? It's, hey, actor. I can help you better if you will get this thing closer to yourself. Stop being afraid of it. Right? And I would never say that to an actor, but a director could say that to an actor. Right? So the director turns to me and is like, what the heck? Why is it feeding back all the time? It's like, well, if you can get them to get it closer, then I can fix this problem. Right? Because that's something that's easy to correct. Right? Just hold it closer. Getting them to talk louder, maybe they're not able to do that. Maybe they're sick. Maybe they don't know how to do that. But they should be able to get the mic closer. Uh, but uh, yeah, getting that closer makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, however, in our scenario, we tend to not be able to leverage directional mics very often because in musical theater, we usually, we usually use omnidirectional mics. And the reason is that, uh, as I was saying earlier, that when you look at a directional microphone or a directional loudspeaker, what's really happening is when you go off axis of it, the frequency response changes. And because we have to put the mic on the, their head somewhere, we can't get it right in front of their mouth. We can't get the mic pointed straight at the mouth, which would be perfectly on axis. That would be the best frequency response. We're always over to the side a little bit or up over. And so if it was a directional mic, then you'd be off axis, and the frequency response would be all wonky. Okay, So we use omnidirectional mics because it doesn't matter where we put them on the face. That mic is, gonna get, is still going to be flat, no matter what angle. And then all you're really worrying about is resonance on their skull. Because sometimes, depending on where you put it, it resonates on their head a little bit differently. Uh, but that's why we use omnidirectional mics. And so we, don't, we usually can't leverage directionality at the microphone. Unless you've got, maybe you've got a musical instrument and you can get a mic with this directional on a stand next to them. But you're probably not going to put a directional mic on an actor's head. But if they're holding a mic in their hand, then yeah, you can get them to point it right at their mouth. They're directly on axis of it. And therefore, yeah, I could go to directional element and it wouldn't hurt the frequency response. You had a question, Ryan? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've never, ever done that. Um, so is it a bad thing whenever, uh, and they're, they're probably not coming in live, but when singers sing live, they pull the mic away, it's kind of like, you know, scream. Well, yeah, I would, I, you know, yeah, I mean, I would prefer, I mean, what they're trying to do is they don't want to clip the mic, right? Yeah. So I would prefer to just tell them, hey, tell me what you're going to do, and I'll adjust the gain, and I'll let a compressor compress it. You know, I don't need them to kind of be compressing it for me. I'd rather them keep it close so that I've got the gain I need. Um, so, but, you know, again, they've probably had that process drilled into them for years, and you're not, you're not going to change that. Um, so as long as you can say, just keep it here as much as you can, you know? Right. So, okay, let's take a look at what the other thing, which is using a directional loudspeaker. Okay? So, just like microphones are directional, we know loudspeakers are directional. And so, here's a, here's a really tight loudspeaker. So, we're getting uh, 25 dB of correction on the mic, but we're also getting uh, some extra gain because of the directionality of the, of the loudspeaker. Okay? And we can change that too. Should be able to. Maybe I need to go, oh yeah, here we go. There we go, so okay, so now you're seeing it. So I got the 25 dB from the mic and 28 dB from the loudspeaker. But you know, if I go to a 90 degree, then I'm not getting the full 28 dB of gain from the loudspeaker. So this is where you can get the most bang for your buck with directivity. We tend to not be able to leverage directional mics very often. But directional loudspeakers, heck yeah. Uh, if you can figure out a way to not only get this geometry right, 
you get this talker right up close to the mic, even if it's an omnidirectional, right? If you can get them right up against it, which if you're putting it on their head, yeah, it's about three inches away from their mouth. If you can do that, and you can get the loudspeaker, you know, a good distance away from them, closer to the audience, and directional, we're at 70 dB of gain. That's a lot, right? I mean, we'll never have feedback, OK? And we solved that problem without ever having to have a conversation with that, with that performer, right? It has nothing to do with how loud they are. We just put the mic on their head, we move the loudspeaker to the right place, and leverage directivity. And even with an omnidirectional mic, we're at almost 70 dB of gain. You could get paid money to do that, to figure that out. And you could get paid more money than the last person who didn't take the time to figure that out. And then the, the show was feeding back all the time. OK? So uh, now the question is, how much gain do you need? Right? How do you know how much gain you need? Uh, well, it depends is the answer to that question. <laughs> right? Uh, but in this, like in this scenario, it's possible that we would have no gain before feedback. Like we just turn the system on to any amount, and it will feed back, because this is just completely wrong. Um, so how did the wall of sound happen? Well, they never had the sound, you know, so the microphone that was right in front of that loudspeaker, that loudspeaker was not reproducing the sound from that microphone, right? The sound from that microphone was coming out of a loudspeaker on the other side of the stage, right? It's called mix minus mixing. So you just make sure that, uh, which is all why in like musical theater, we never put their vocals through the monitors. Because they're sitting there with an omnidirectional mic on their forehead. And if we shoot their own voice out of a loudspeaker into their mic, we're done. <laughs> right? Shut down. Go home. No gain. OK? And, and you get people that come to musical theater from, you know, like the, the, maybe from doing singing at church or maybe in a band or something. And they're used to being able to get that. And, you, and if you've got a directional microphone in their hand, or a headset mic that's directional that comes right in front of their mouth, then yeah, you can give their voices back to them in the monitor. Because the monitor is off axis of the mic. And so you don't get a hit on gain. But if you put an omnidirectional mic on that person and then shoot a monitor with their own voice in it, you're screwed. So that is, that is the hill you die on, on, you know, on every musical. Like you're always going to get asked for it. Hey, can I have my voice in the monitors? And you know, it's like, listen, here, here's the speech. It's like, yeah, you know, I can really understand how that would be very helpful for you. It's got to be really difficult to be up here on this enormous stage with the people you're supposed to be singing with, you know, 20 feet away from you and trying to harmonize and balance your levels and, you, and you know, the, the walls are so far away and you're not hearing your own voice back at you. I, that's got to be really difficult to, to do what you're trying to do and do it well when you're getting nothing back and you have no idea how what you're doing is sounding. So I get how hearing your voice out of the monitor would be really helpful for you. And I think that's a really reasonable thing to ask for. And I really wish I could give it to you. <laughs> but I can't. Because if I give that to you, if I give your voice to, to you, I can't give it to the audience. And wouldn't you rather they hear you? <laughs> like, wouldn't you rather be up here you know, singing your heart out and have the audience actually hear it? Because if I give it to you, you're the only one who gets to hear it. And the 500 or 1,000 people out there, they don't get to hear it then. And so like, I get that this is tough, but I really need you to dig deep and you know, fight through this and just figure it out, because that's the only way we're going to let them hear it. You know? Then you win, right? Maybe yeah. not here, but when you, is that when you get any of those monitors? Sure. That's, a, that's another great way to solve that problem, right, is, is you stick something in their ears and then that you know if it's if it isolates then it doesn't get into the mic yeah you can blast all they want into there absolutely is, is it possible to like hurt someone on accident with that yeah system? definitely that's probably a little bit more that's why when you have anytime you have in ears you, you should have a dedicated person at a dedicated mixing console mixing that so that they and they should have some they should be wearing those headphones so they can hear what they're sending to that person because you know, if you're doing that blind, you could hurt somebody. Yeah. Is that a feasible option here? I mean, because I've seen the, the monitors problem a couple times. 
it'll never pass the pretty committee. Yeah. So, you know, Maybe if it's like a little in theater, they just will never no one will let you do it. Yeah. Um, and no one will pay for that. No one will pay for a whole second mix engineer to mix in-ears and plus all the cost of the equipment itself to do that. It's like no one's going to pay for that even in theater. Even on Broadway theater, they won't do that. Would like, they prefer that? Like if there was The actors don't want that either. Because they, they don't want to feel isolated like that. So nobody really wants that. Okay. Right? Now, like the musical that I just did, you know, just closed on Sunday, but we had in-ears on some of the band. Yeah. So like the music director who was on stage playing keyboard, um, she needed to be able to hear the vocals. But she's on stage with the actors. So I can't put the voices out of the monitors overhead because I won't have any game before feedback. So I gave her in-ears and, and I gave her her own mixer. Right, I, I you know, because I didn't, I couldn't hire a second person to mix her in ears, so I just gave her her own little mixer. It was like an iPad uh, mix, you know, interface up to my console. I said, here, you, here's all the faders. You just do what you got to do, so you can hear what you got to hear, and you're responsible for it. So she was the one that made sure she didn't blow herself away and everything. Um, and I did the same thing with the drummer. The drummer was wearing ears as well, because um, they were on stage. And they needed to hear the voices, and that was the only way to do it. All right, but. Since they weren't moving around, I could do it wired. I didn't have to do wireless in ears, which is really expensive. Yeah. Yeah. But it was out of a hot spot that was this far away from him, yeah. way far away from any of the actors and their mics, right? So that distance math works in your favor in that scenario. OK, so let's take a look at what this does now for us. So in this scenario, where we have 0 <laughs> dB of gain, OK, you're pushing your fader, pushing your fader, and this is the inaudible range. So you're not making it louder yet, OK? And when you get to the green area, you're making it louder. OK, I'm just barely now starting to make it louder, and then boom, feedback, right? You been in that scenario? I've been in that scenario. This is not a very well-designed sound system, OK? So however, let's see if we can, come on, come back. So what if we just get that actor closer to that mic, OK? Now we got 22 dB of gain. Now look what we're doing. So now it's like nothing, 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 something, something more, 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 and it's not until we get past zero that we feed back, OK? Potential acoustical gain. OK. All right. So uh, the take home message here is let me go back to uh, well, let me get, I'll do this one. So take home message here is gain will go up if you can get the talker closer to the mic. If you can get the loudspeaker farther away from the microphone and closer to the listener, look at this. If I go, if I could do that <laughs> and that, I'm at 83 dB of gain. And I can make the direction, yeah. So if you can sort of, the, the biggest bang for your buck here is to manipulate these distances, right? Always get the talker as close as you can to the mic. Get that loudspeaker as far away. From, if the sound of, from the mic is coming out of that loudspeaker, get it as far away from that mic as you possibly can. And get it as close to the audience as you possibly can. Yeah. So, I, in my extensive preschool training, which wasn't extensive, was you told. Training preschool? Oh, wow. That's yeah. great. Um, no, back when I was doing choirs yeah. very consistently. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That would you have three for the choir, uh, one for each uh, sure. octave and a tenor section. And before pan, you would the thing. I don't know if this is before we did it, but you would always hand out the mics. So you would right. spike it and you'd do and fade it until it started to spread it back and it yep. brought that down. Is that not like? Is that did that help at all? So. 
what you're basically doing is you're saying, okay, we know that it's a sine wave that feeds back. Okay, so the strategy there is, okay, a sine wave feedback, I can use an EQ with a notch to take out that frequency so it's not coming out of the loudspeaker. That's the basic idea, right? Problem is, okay, that gets you maybe another dB. And you push it, now a different one feeds back, right? And, and you gotta like take that out. And you, it's, a, it's a battle. Eventually you get to the point where, okay, I've, yeah, so it's like now you don't have the gain anymore, right? It's like you can push the fader farther, but it's not actually any louder because you've taken so much stuff out. And not only that, your frequency response is obliterated, okay? So it sounds bad, and it's not actually that much louder, okay? But you get to feel better because you get to push the fader farther, so you know? <laughs> Well, so, so you're basically, I mean, it's probably this situation, right? Right. So, yeah, you're kind of screwed, okay? So, you know, if, if they're like this far away, right, maybe even 10 feet away, right, and, you know, yeah, it's probably closer to that, right? Um, you know, yeah, you're going to have a hard time. Um, so hope, maybe, hopefully you can get a directional mic. If it was an SM81, it was a cardioid, okay? So you do that at least, and now you're at 21 dB. But again, that, you, you really don't want to sit there. You're really probably going to be closer to 15 uh, usable gain. Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough gain to get the job done. Now, if you... Then you're screwed. Then you're screwed. Okay. So your only option at that point is, okay, yeah, getting them getting them closer is probably not going to do it because then it's going to you know not going to pick everybody up. So your only option is, can I get this? Can I move this any closer to the audience, right? And that would get. Yeah, I got more, right? Can I get it further up in the air, right? So moving this is the thing that's going to get you the most bang for your buck. You know, yeah. If you can't move this, if this has to be here, and this has to be that distance, and you can't change that mic out, and you can't get these people closer, then your only option at that point is to try to tackle it with an EQ, right? But just know that best case scenario, that gets you another 6 dB. And maybe that's enough. But any more than that, and you're going to, you know, to get rid of a sine wave, even with a really tight filter, especially if you're using a graphic EQ. If you're using a graphic EQ, that's a third octave filter every time you move that thing. You're taking way more frequencies out of commission than just that one sine wave that's feeding back. So any much more than 6 dB of extra gain and you're just, it's a diminishing return at that point. You're just making it sound awful and, but loud. Loud but awful. Um, and at that point, yeah, I was like, well, why are we even doing this then? Okay, so uh, the better approach would be, you know, if, if I was really in that situation, then I would fight as hard as I could to move this. <laughs> I would do everything I could to move that. Because <laughs> that's, that's going to get me the biggest, diff you know, because if I could get it moved, even if it's even, so if it's on a stick and the stick only goes up this high, right? I can at least do that, right? Yeah. Just get, if I can get, if I can't make this number shorter, I can at least make this number larger, right? Yeah. Would that entire thing look different with line arrays? Not really. Um, the, the only thing that line arrays get you is, uh, you know, this 90 degrees, that's obviously not at every frequency. The low frequencies are omnidirectional, 
which is why the low frequency speed back first, because they're the ones that aren't directional. Okay? So the line array gets you more directional low frequencies. So you might get a little bit more bang for your buck for the directivity part of it, because right. Right? the low frequencies would be more directional, and therefore you'd get a bit more gain. Yeah. Our speakers are stationary. They're, they tend not to move. And we've always had problems with our choir yep. not hearing them at all at the beginning. So yep. kind of you, there's nothing you can do. It's like yeah. this is a law of physics problem you're dealing with. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, can you go to more directional mics if you can't make them farther away? Can you switch to a hypercardioid and get a little bit more gain that way? I mean, these are, the, these are the tools at your disposal, right? If you can't move the loudspeaker and you can't move the mic, can you change that loudspeaker for something more directional? Can you change the mic out for something more directional? Yeah. <laughs> Do you, um, is this available? Can we like, use this tool? This? Yeah, like this. Yeah, it's on, my, it's on the website for my book. OK, cool. You can get it. Right. And I was just want to show them, like, hey, yeah. this is not <laughs> something that cannot help. Yeah. All right, so we're out of time. But what I want you to do, I sent you guys a little assignment. And that assignment is to take a look at Stevens Center. OK? And you know where the, la where the center cluster is there. And yeah, it's up over the stage in that eyebrow. You could pull up the section and, and view that. And then, you know, you know, I'm going to say make some assumptions about the talker. So let me actually pull it up, and I'll, I'll read it to you. Um, uh, so OK, so calculate the acoustical gain with a 6 dB safety factor for a sound system in Stevens Center, assuming the center cluster and the microphone are omnidirectional. Calculate your answer for the talker standing at plaster line. So they're standing at the plaster line, not downstage of the plaster line. At the plaster line, uh, they got a mic six inches away from them. Okay, so half a foot away from them, and the listener is at the back row. And we'll just say back row orchestra. Don't worry about the balcony. Okay, back row orchestra. What's your gain going to be in that situation? Figure that out. And then I'm going to say, okay, well it turns out that you're not using omnidirectional loudspeakers. You're using directional ones. They're DMB Q10s. So Use that, that, that bottom, that, that one that's closest is the downfill one, right? You should be able to look, look at where that's aimed and say, OK, if I had some directivity going on here, how much extra gain would I get? You can look at the ISO bars for that, for that loudspeaker, and you should be able to say, OK, at this angle from the microphone, this loudspeaker will be a certain amount quieter. Well, that's gain you get to add in your system. If that angle is 6 dB down, great, you get that, that much in. Yeah, because it's a good way to get an overview of the directivity per frequency. It's just more, because they know that you know the the real detail you're going to use with a computer. You're going to use ease or something like that. So, and then I'm going to say, okay, now go to a directional microphone. So take a look at the polar plot for an SM58 microphone. See what that how that changes this. Now try a Beta 58. It's a different directivity on that mic. See what the difference is. Try to see how much gain you can get by introducing directivity. Okay. Yeah? You with me? Uh, no. So I think it's the Friday after we come back. So you got, you got plenty of time to figure this out. Well, 